What's up beautiful people, it's Yuval here and in today's video I'm going to show you how to color grade like the new Netflix show Squid Game. It's only going to take us a few minutes, we're going to keep it pretty simple. So even if you're new to Resolve, I'm sure this tutorial will be um, helpful to you and it'll be easy for you to follow along. But just quickly before we start, if you're enjoying this content and you want to see more videos like this one, give this video a like and consider subscribing, that would be highly appreciated. Uh, but now let's get going. Okay, so this is the shot that we're going to color grade. It's from Artgrid, it was shot on red. And right off the bat, you can see that the color palette is like pretty similar um, to the Squid Game color palette. Um, this kind of blue teal um, thing going on, which is what we're looking for. As obviously a lot of the look from the show is coming from the set design and like wardrobe. Um, they're blue um, jumpers, so it wouldn't really be possible to recreate the look uh, without having something that is already sort of similar, at least in, in like the base colors. And then we'll just need a few nodes to make this very similar um, to Squid Game. So this is my reference. This is the kind of look I'm going to try and recreate. And if, if I just do like a Rec 709 um, conversion here, for, uh, for our footage. You can see it doesn't really match up. So we're just going to make a few adjustments and um, within no time, we're going to get pretty close to the reference. So let's get going. So let's quickly analyze what is going on um, in this image from Squid Game. If we look at the vector scope, we can see that there's like pretty much only two colors here and that's the teal blue um, jumpers. And then we have complementary to that, just on the other side of the vector scope, we have her skin, which is sitting pretty close to the skin tone line, which makes sense. And that creates this beautiful contrast because these are complementary colors, it's still an orange. What we're also going to look at is the waveform. And we're just going to try and see where things um, sit. Um, we can see a pretty balanced image. Maybe like there's a lot of shadows, obviously. Um, so we're, we're just going to keep that in mind and try to match our image to that. So this is the Rec 709 conversion and I want to reset that and just walk off of the original log format that we have because I'm going to take a little bit of a different approach. So first off, we're going to call this one base. Then we're going to make a new node using Option S or Alt S if you're on Windows. And instead of doing the Rec 709 conversion here, which is my usual workflow, um, what I found that actually works here is applying a film print emulation LUT. Now the show wasn't filmed on actual film, so we're not really trying to recreate uh, like a 16 millimeter or 35 millimeter film look. But just using these LUTs helps you sometimes get a fast um, sort of global look to just walk off. So I'm going to go into LUTs here and there's a bunch of free film look LUTs. Um, that comes with Resolve, so you all should have it. It's right here, Film Looks, and I'm going to use the Kodak 2383D60. I'm gonna double tap. And right off the bat, this looks very dark. Um, it's not really what we want. Um, so what we're going to do is just create a new node, and this one we're going to call FPE. And this new one is going to be um, Exposure. And now I wanna pull up my reference. So I'm going to use curves for this and I'm going to just start pulling this up. So now we have that brightness, but all of our shadows are very lifted. So I'm gonna fix that. Using lift, I'm just bringing everything down. And I just wanna keep playing with the offset um, and the lift to just get to that right position can also go into contrast and try to match that. And we're getting pretty close, just a little bit more tweaks. So something like that looks okay. Then we're going to go back into the base node and I just wanna tweak the white balance a little bit because our reference image is more warm um, than what we currently have. So I'm going to go into my temp and try to match that. Okay, that's already doing quite a lot. Then play around with the tint a little bit. So we're getting pretty close here, as you can see. Now I'm not really looking at his skin because we're going to fix that. 
um, in a different node. So I'm just trying to match like the overall um, colors and tones. And I think uh, it's pretty good. And you can see things are looking a bit weird um, over there. That's because I uh, messed around with the mid-tones. So I'm going to kind of undo that. Yeah, now it looks much better. So I think already we're looking pretty good. Um, obviously there's some differences because of lighting. Um, the lighting is completely different. On the reference image, the light is coming uh, from above and you can see how the two sides of her face are pretty, are pretty much the same in terms of the brightness. And it's a little bit more bright on that side, like on, on the right side of the frame. Um, but generally speaking, it's like pretty soft and even. And on our image, the light is coming from behind on camera left. And we have all of these shadow side, um, which looks great, but it's just a bit different uh, from the reference image. So we can't really expect it to look exactly the same. So now I'm going to create a new node and I wanna just up the saturation a bit. Somewhere around there. And on this node, I also want to lower the highlights a bit. And I'm mainly looking at the right window over there. No, it's not a window actually, it's like a whiteboard. So this is before and that's after, not as distracting as before. So this is what we've done so far, started with the log version and now we're here. And now it's time to fix the skin tones and make them match with our reference. So I'm going to again create a new node. I'm going to go into my qualifier. I'm gonna click there. And I'm going to start qualifying the skin. Should be pretty easy, but let's see. So I don't really care that I'm getting all of this stuff there in the background because we're going to create a window um, but i do want to get a separation like over there so let's tweak things a little bit more so this is not the best selection but just for the sake of time uh, we're going to keep it at that obviously keep tweaking it um, if you're actually creating a project, uh, but we're just going to move on with that. So now I'm going to pull up my reference again and let's start tweaking things until we get it just right. So I'm going to go into the log wheels and pretty aggressively push the offset and try to see what we can kind of achieve just from that. Okay, so just that move alone. It's a small difference. but it's getting us closer. And now let's try to push the saturation a bit. So probably something like that. And keep in mind, we're not going to be able to completely replicate it because as I said before, the lighting is just different. So I'm mainly trying to look at this kind of area because the shadow side is obviously affected by the blue lighting here and that we don't have in the reference. So I'm just trying to get it like in the same world. And you can see here we have a little bit of a cooler highlights. So I'm trying to push that uh, on our image just a little bit, something like that. And then maybe using the uh, curves here with U versus sat, ah no, sorry, U versus luminance, we can sample the skin here and maybe try to raise the level here a little bit then using u versus sat i'm going to again try and see what we can do here so this is what we have so far this is before that's after So we got rid of a little bit of the kind of green cast that we had, and it's also a bit more saturated, uh, which I think matches pretty well. 
So now another thing that I want to do, let's call this skin. Um, I'm going to create a vignette to match the lighting a little bit more, as much as I can. So I'm going to go into the windows, I'm going to create a new window, and let's put our view um, on the power windows. So I'm going to create this window on my subject, and I'm going to click here to invert the mask, because what I'm going to do now is using the curves, I'm going to darken it, so now it's basically darkening everything that is outside my window. So we can see that is helping with matching the lighting a little bit and just focusing our um, eyes on our subject. And just on the window menu here, I just want to control the softness a bit more. Maybe something like that looks pretty good. And now I feel like I want to do a few more tweaks. I feel like our reference image is more contrasty um, and I want to just get our image a bit closer to that. So I'm going to go into my curves again and I'm just trying to make this very small S curve. And that is a bit much, so I'm going to go into the key and lower the key output. So that looks better. And now I also want to go into U versus U. And I'm going to just try and match the blue jumper color exactly. So now another critical thing and maybe the last thing we're going to do and it's going to be a big one and this is going to be relevant to pretty much anything you color grade. We're going to clean the blacks. If I look at my darker areas over there, um, you can see that it just has like that green cast. It's, it's pretty ugly and it's throwing like the whole look off. So first off, I'm going to get my shadows lower crush them a bit, maybe something like that. And now I'm going to go into my shadows and I'm on the log wheels, not the primaries. Um, so I'm going to push this in the opposite direction from the color cast that we have. And if we are not really sure what that is, we're just going to play around until uh, things just look right. And now if we pull up our reference, um, the problem now is that we kind of shifted the colors too much because we've added all of that um, magenta there in the shadows and it's affecting too much of the image. So what I want to do is go into the low range over here and if I lower this like to zero, then um, what I did is not affecting any of the shadows. And as I'm raising this up, you can see it's starting to affect more and more of the image. So I'm going to try and find a nice balance there. So something like that, I think looks pretty good. And now I want to lower the shadows even a bit more. Um, so we can use the node prior to that node because on this node we did uh, the color of the shadows and uh, we crushed them on the same node. So, so now I just want to lower the shadows. I'm not trying to affect the color. So we're going to do that on this node. So that should be everything. And let's watch a quick before and after and see the process that we've done. So that is all for today's video. Hopefully it was helpful to you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please give this video a like and also consider subscribing for more of these videos and just to help me keep this channel alive, keep the content coming. I'm trying to upload weekly now, so um, I'd highly appreciate that. But that is all for today. Thank you for watching this video um, and I'm gonna see all of you hopefully in the next one.